This last month, Liverpool have been missing two of their most creative players in Trent and Salah, yet they've managed to score 14 goals in their last four games. Four difficult games against Fulham that have been in good form, Bournemouth that have been in good form, and even Chelsea that have been looking a lot better. They've been creatively excellent, despite the absence of their two best players on the right-hand side. And a name called Connor Bradley has been a big part of that. 20 years of age, he's come into the Liverpool squad. He's been so good that people are saying... Does Trent get back in? Does Trent start right back now? And this has put Liverpool in a dilemma, a good dilemma, a good problem to have. Well, can you play with both Trent and Bradley? And the answer to that is yes, but it depends on the game state. There's going to be games where having Trent and right back who verting in midfield might be best for Liverpool because then you can overload the midfield and still have Curtis Jones, McAllister and Soberstein midfield and Trent could come in from right back. You can overload the midfield and uh, you can have Curtis Jones play to help with retention. There's going to be games like when Klopp changed it versus Arsenal where Bradley is at right back and Trent can push into midfield and Bradley can deal with Martinelli and a tricky winger, which is maybe something they could have done when Trent struggled against Doku defensively, but was so amazing going forward versus Man City. Bradley can be at right back, provide the width, deal with the tricky winger and Trent could go into midfield and curate and take the role of the, one of the midfielders. There could be games where they start with a midfield three, maybe Bradley at right back for a little bit more defensive stability because he's sort of the right back version of Robertson. And then maybe if Liverpool have got a lot of the ball, but they're not doing enough with it, Trent comes on to the pitch, replaces, I don't know, Curtis Jones or whoever's playing Gravenberg. And all of a sudden you've got chances being created in the final third in those central areas for Nunes. And one of the reasons I think Liverpool are top of the league and one of the reasons Liverpool have been the best team in the league this season and so is because Klopp's changed the midfield on multiple occasions to win the game. Where Liverpool have maybe not had the best first half, but how good have Liverpool been in the second half of almost every match? How many times have Liverpool gone behind and won a match and Klopp's made subs, whether it's Harvey Elliott coming on and changing things, whether it's Trent going into midfield, whether it's Curtis Jones, Sobersly, Gravenberch, because Liverpool have so many options in midfield. They can change this, the game state if they can have someone that can help them control the midfield more. They can have someone to help them create more chances in midfield. And I think what Klopp has is the ability to move Trent into midfield, the ability to change the midfield, to deal with the problems he faces in game so Liverpool can tactically beat their opponents. So we're going to talk about how Connor Bradley and Trent can line up together in the same midfield, not same midfield, in the same Liverpool team. How, how does it work? When will it work? We're going to talk about Trent in the field, Connor Bradley. Trent could technically also play left back, but I think with Joe Gomez being so good and Robertson coming back, there's no point talking about Trent left back, Bradley right back. We're going to talk about how they can play together. But before I talk about how they can play together, how it will work and when it will work, I want to talk about Connor Bradley and just give him some praise for how good he's been. He's been brilliant in every game he stepped in, you know, to fill Trent's shoes you were thinking Liverpool might notice that. Liverpool might notice they don't have Trent, but they didn't. The fact that he's doing the role of the best right back in the world at age 20 and Liverpool didn't even notice Trent was missing shows you how good he's been. But what Conor Radley has that makes him stand out compared to other young players is young players come in and they're nervy and they play sideways and they play backwards. They don't want to give the ball away. But Conor Bradley comes in and he plays with that confidence. He's got such, such confidence. When he gets the ball, he just wants to bring the ball forward. If you're a fullback for Liverpool, you've got to get forward. You've got to bomb forward. He's happy to dribble. He's happy to drive forward. He's happy to create. He loves to get the ball forward. He loves to attack. He's great 1v1. He's got that determination, that le electricity to beat his man, that determination to get back and put a tackle in. And because he's got that good recovery pace, he's very difficult to beat 1v1, but he's also very good at getting past his man. And something that he has is a very good reading of the game and understanding um, awareness of the game, a very good IQ to do those quick one-twos that assist to Darwin Nunes versus Norris to make those runs, to make those crosses, to overlap. He knows when to come inside. He knows when to get back. He knows when to get forward. He seems to be a very, very good player. And he was player of the year at Bolton. And Liverpool are in a position where a lot of people were saying, oh my God, Robertson's out, Trent's out, Simakas is out. We're going to have to buy a right back. We're going to have to buy a right back. Liverpool now can save a bit of bucks and say, you know what, let's invest elsewhere. And if you look at him and what he did at Bolton, and here were his individual honours. Player of the season was phenomenal. And sort of statistic-wise as well, 12 goals and assists while on loan at Bolton. And he showcased his attacking abilities. But something he was very good at was defending, defending the wide spaces, winning wide duels. And I think when Trent comes centrally, the one thing that does is allow um, a bit more space down the left-hand side for the opposition's left wingers, Martinelli Doku. But if Trent is playing in midfield and you've got Bradley there to cover the defensive area absolutely fine because Canate is often having to go and be dragged out wide. So, and the example of that I, I say is when Trent was coming up against sort of Doku, he was so good going forward in that Man City game, but defensively, Canate had to keep coming out wide to deal with Doku because he got a lot of space and caused a lot of problems. But Trent didn't have a bad game, 
but Doku got a lot of the ball. Now, Connor Bradley could then just be at right back, Trent could be a midfielder, and they could switch him for one of their midfielders, depending on the game state. What we know about uh, Connor Bradley is something that I never thought he'd be able to match, especially at age 20, was Trent's numbers. I thought, well, he's going to come in and be a good uh, right back for Liverpool. There's no doubt he's a good player there, but obviously don't expect him to get Trent's numbers. <sighs> three assists and a goal. He's still definitely more of a Robertson type player for me, but wow. And I think this gives Liverpool a good and a bad problem because at left back, you've got Robertson, Simakas, Gomez that can play. Technically, Trent and Bradley can play there. We see Delo play left back for United, all of that. Players can invert. Um, I do think that Trent has the ability to do left back with Bradley at right back, but there's no real need for that. Uh, you've got Trent, Bradley and Gomez that can play right back. You've got a midfield, Eno, McAllister, Jones, Gravenberch, Thiago, Sobosai, Elliot, Beartich, Trent, potentially even Bradley shown in case the ability of maybe he's able to come inside. And you look at it and you say, what is Liverpool's best midfield free? Because you could say, we'll just play Bradley right back and we'll play Trent in midfield. But I still think Liverpool's best midfield free in terms of balance is McAllister, Jones, Sobosai. I still think Liverpool having McAllister, Jones, Sobosai is their best midfield free, but maybe Trent at right back and Trent and Verts to help with the overload partnering McAllister. I think that is what their best lineup is. But there's going to be games where actually Liverpool don't have that killer edge. They don't have that killer edge. And Curtis Jones is great at retaining the ball, great at retaining control. But you know what? Liverpool needs someone to just bosh that into the attackers where maybe they're not winning the midfield, they're not beating the man-to-man -man press, and they need someone that can pass the ball long into the final. And that's where Trent would come in. If they're struggling to beat the man-to-man -man press, if they want to evade the second phase, and just get the ball right up to the attack. Trent's long passing could do that. And there's certain games where if they're struggling, Trent and maybe instead of Jones could work better. Now, I still think that is the best midfield free in terms of balance. And potentially then you can bring Bradley on at right back. You could bring Bradley on for Jones. Trent moves into right back. And if Liverpool is struggling in the midfield and they want to evade the midfield and get to the attack, you've got Trent's long passing to do that. Now, these were just some notes I made on playing Trent in midfield. I said, you know, playing Bradley at right back means Trent could go into midfield more. We saw when Klopp made the change versus Arsenal uh, last season. Um, we saw Trent, instead of going out wide, came into midfield. And obviously Trent ended up being one of the best players in the second half of that game. That was last season. And since then, Trent's didn't done this inverting role at right back. Obviously, he was next to Fabinho. It was a little bit different being next to McAllister and Endo. But he's been working very, very well. And what we've seen is Trent is good on the ball. And we've seen that because Trent is so good on the ball and because Trent is so good at creating, Klopp's been happy since that game last year, which was probably about March last year, to say, you know what? I'm happy to be a bit more defensively and vulnerable. Canate is good at defending wide spaces. Van Dijk's back to his best. I'll play Trent in midfield because Trent is so good in midfield that Klopp's happy to be more defensively vulnerable. And since then, I think Liverpool have picked up more points than any other team since Trent's role has changed from going out wide to actually coming centrally. And going coming centrally means that Liverpool have been able to overload the midfield, but it also means that actually the winger gets pulled in with Trent and that actually opens up more space for Salah as well. And it was said by an Arsenal fan, being able to move Trent into midfield is a big reason why Liverpool come and clutch in these games. There might be games where Trent starts and Bradley comes on in the, in, in the 60th minute. They move Trent into midfield, Bradley plays right back, and that will help Liverpool become more more clutch and that could be an example of this Trent could be starting at right back and Curtis Jones could be in midfield here and then you know what Liverpool can then just put Bradley on for Jones Trent comes into midfield bosh that that's the thing now there's going to be certain games where I think Trent might be better at right back inverting there's going to be certain games where Trent might be better in midfield it all depends on game state but this completely worked versus Arsenal Bradley came on dealt with Martinelli Trent got further up the pitch and Arsenal were knocked out the FA Cup and I thought Arsenal were really good in the first half of that game but Liverpool got a lot better in the second half. And that was an example of that. So sort of diving into the importance of Trent in midfield, and this was taken from my video a month ago, and Liverpool have obviously had the most points since. And I think Liverpool would actually have had five more points than Man City. But since April last year, no team has picked up more points than Liverpool. And that's when Trent started inverting into midfield. Um, don't know how many had a fourth. And one thing you can see here about Trent is the passes he plays very high up into the final box. Now, one thing that Trent has is the lowest retention in the league. And if Liverpool aren't keeping the ball well, move Trent back to right back, bring on someone like Curtis Jones who has good retention. But what it does do is increase creativity. If Liverpool are having a lot of the ball and doing nothing with it, that's when you want Trent in midfield. If Liverpool aren't keeping the ball well, that's when you want Trent at right back and maybe Curtis Jones in midfield. And because Liverpool have got a player that's elite at creating and a player that's elite at retaining the ball, Klopp can just adapt to how the game is going and make those substitutions to win the game. And the new role means that Trent can now, you know, recycle the ball and progress the ball forward. And if you look at statistics like average pass length, no one passes the 
the ball at the pitch, longer distances than Trent, 21.29 metres. He can evade the man-to-man -man pressing midfield if Liverpool are struggling with that. Um, he can evade the midfield completely if Liverpool are struggling with that as well. And you can see since Trent has changed roles, he's been creating a lot more centrally, um, whereas obviously a lot of the creativity used to come down the right-hand side. But we see with Connor Bradley, he's very good at creating down the right-hand side. He's got assists, he's got goals. He's been a creative threat down the right-hand side. So what playing Trent and Connor Bradley could likely give you is Trent will still be there creating in those central zones. You can see since his role change, Trent's been creating in the central zones for the forwards in central areas. But you can also have Bradley still adding the threat down the right hand side. So all of a sudden, opponents are going to have to deal with Trent causing problems in the middle with him spraying balls. Robertson down the left, Bradley down the right, and all of a sudden there's an overload of creativity from central and wide areas, whereas Trent coming into midfield has meant that there's been less creativity from the right-hand side. So all in all, if I had to conclude today's video, and it just lagged a little bit while filming, so I'm hoping it comes out all right, is that Bradley's young and he won't need to start every game, and there'll be a lot of games where Trent is just playing right back and inverting the midfield. But Bradley can allow Trent to start certain games in midfield. He can allow Trent uh, uh, Klopp to make changes at like the 60th minute or at half time to bring Trent into midfield and not have to worry about all defensively what we're going to do at right back. And Bradley can even just cover injuries, cover depth, take the pressure burden off Joe Gomez, who was almost cover for left back, right back, and centre back. And Bradley can sometimes play if Trent needs to rest. They can now rest Trent knowing they've got a comfortable alternative, they can now start Trent a right back and moving into midfield without having to worry about that right back role. They can now play a right back and Trent in midfield. It just gives Liverpool that extra option, which for me is a massive advantage. Let me know your thoughts on today's video. I hope it didn't lag or glitch too much. Smash a like, smash a subscribe. See you next time. Bye.